Hey, thanks everyone for joining me today. My name is Kathy Croning. I'm here for Amy Howard at home to show you a new technique using the embossing gel and the furniture stencils. So today we're just going to talk a little bit briefly about the products that we're getting ready to put on this piece. I'm actually going to use a mirror that is basically an oak finish mirror that is a little bit, I don't know, and interesting so I'm ready to spice it up and just make it look like something that would really stand out on a wall and just yet have like a soothing feel to it so that means we're getting started with a couple of different things the furniture stencils and the embossing gel of course is the main focus of this video but I also want to talk to you just a couple minutes about the rest of the products so the first thing that we always use is clean slate on anything that we are getting ready to apply paint or products to uh, it takes off all of the grease, the grime, the dirt, dust, oils, anything that would keep the products from adhering to your piece. So this just goes on with a clean, dry, lint-free cloth. You just pour it over about, I don't know, one, two, maybe three seconds, and then you take it off and just clean your piece with it. The really awesome thing about this stuff is that you do not have to rinse it off. You let it dry about 10 minutes and it's ready to go. You want to just also remember when you're cleaning it to keep turning your towel over or your rag over and not continuing to move around the things that you're pulling off, the dust, the dirt, the grime. <clears throat> just to make sure that you get it all cleaned off and prepped, it's dry 10 minutes, then the next step would be your first product that you're getting ready to apply to your piece. For me, this particular piece, this mirror today, we're going to use Amy Howard's One Step Paint first. This color that I have is Harbor Lights and it's just gonna be one coat. Now, normally if I was doing a piece with additional coatings to have like a full finish, I would do two coats, sometimes even three, depending on what the piece actually looks like underneath and what kind of coverage I'm going for. But today I'm only going to use one coat because the next thing that I'm going to do is apply the stencil using the embossing gel and then actually using milk paint after that. So after these two things, we're going to apply the embossing gel. This stuff is fantastic and it's really fun to use. I can't wait to show you how this works out. Using this furniture stencil here. Now I ordered a, a big stencil. You can see this right here, it says furniture stencil on it. And this is the piece that I chose to use on my mirror on the sides of, or on the top and the bottom of the mirror. There are several that come in this package. It's about this long. And about this wide, just as wide as this, of course. And you can cut out whichever pieces that you want to use to apply to your, your piece uh, using the embossing gel. After we finish with that, we're going to go on to the milk paints. I have three different colors here that we're going to be using. And then we're going to take this off with sea sponges using the antiquing glaze. So that ought to be really fun. And then the very last part, we'll be adding the minor beeswax for a good protection coverage. And after that, I'm going to highlight it with the dark wax, and I'm using the puck dark wax. I did a several practice pieces. I actually put them out on social media to, to figure out which one I wanted to use on this particular mirror, and I asked people to vote. And for me, that was kind of a fun opportunity, you know, just to see what people like, what their eye is drawn to. And so there's a surprise, of course, what we've selected. We'll show you that here in just a few minutes. But at the very end, I'll show you all of the practice pieces that I did uh, before I started this project and made a decision on which way to go. So just one thing about practice, you know, it's always a really good thing to do. Just take an hour or two a week. Amy always talks about, you know, you need to have time to play. That play time is really good for you. It hones your skills. It, it gets you out of your comfort zone to try to learn new things that you may have never wanted to try before without any pressure of it being for a client or on a piece that you're um, already just worried that you might ruin if you, if you try something on it like a test. So use test boards. I've used several. Uh, we're gonna go over these here in just a little bit. But anyway, that's for the very end. So thanks again for joining and let's get started. Okay, I have my Mylar stencil, the furniture stencil, uh, uh, sitting on here and it's been taped down with painter's tape just to secure it to the piece while I actually apply the embossing gel. I, I cut out a piece of the stencil 
the big piece, that, the sheet that it came on to use. You can use a plastic putty knife or you can use a metal scraper. Uh, I think plastic is probably the preferred method because this is a gentle piece of material and the metal might be a little bit too harsh for this. Amy recommends in her training video that you use plastic. That's what she prefers to. So you can use that option, but I thought, well, I'll just try this and see if it works to apply this to the piece. So here we go. The embossing gel is very thick. As you can tell, it's sort of a pasty kind of glue-like consistency. And I'm just putting a little bit of it here on this piece of plastic to run it across the piece. And I'm just gonna start scraping. She said don't go over it too many times. And it's just a gentle movement. And you don't want it too thick. You're going to use the heat gun on this afterwards. And you can scrape off your excess and put it back in the jar so you'll be able to have that for use later. No holidays, uh, you know, no places where you don't have any embossing gel within the stencil. You want to make sure that you have everything accurately covered. Put a little bit more right here. I don't want this to be perfect, so don't get hung up on, oh, I didn't get enough on in every single spot, or I got just a little bit too much. Just, you know, give this a try and show yourself a little bit of, of grace in the process. All right, so I'm ready to pull this off. There we go. Now see there are a couple little spots here that it looks like it's missing a tad bit. I might take a, teeny, take, a, take a tiny brush to try to touch that, but I don't know, it could ruin it. So I'll think about it here for a moment and then we're going to use the heat gun on it, dry it out, and then just sort of allow that to lift. And I'll show you how that works. All right, next up is the heat gun. And I am getting ready to apply just a little bit of heat lightly to the entire section here. And then I'm gonna concentrate on it just a little bit deeper as we go through. And you should be able to see some of this bubble and lift and expand as the process works. Okay, I'm just getting ready to give it a once over lightly with the heat gun. As you can see, you just wanna stay back a little bit away from the gel and your paint as well. Don't get that heated up too much. So you just give it a once over and as you start to focus and concentrate on the stencil, the embossing gel where the stencil has been, you can see where it's starting to lift a tiny bit. As this gets a little drier and more concentration of heat is added to certain locations, you can see it bubbling up. See there at the bottom, it's starting to raise and then towards the middle of the screen there. And then as we continue to go, it will grow and puff up and then kind of settle back down again until it hardens. You want to be careful not to put too much heat onto your paint. This can cause bubbles in the paint itself and you will probably have to go back and lightly sand those little spots. Uh, if you get too much heat on the paint and then touch it up with a small brush. So just watch not only your Mylar stencil embossing gel creation, but also watch your paint surrounding that area. See in the middle here where the flower is starting to lift? We're going to get a close up here in just a moment of that. This is actually a really fun process. It's very rewarding to see this grow and change based upon uh, the heat. Right there, you see that bubbling up there at the lower left hand corner? That's exactly what it's supposed to do. We'll just keep going through this process until we have it all set, raised and set, and then cooled off. Okay, I've added the stencil to the bottom portion of this mirror as well. So I'm going to apply the embossing gel to this section. I've secured it with the painter's tape. 
and I'm going to apply it, you know, just take a little bit on my card here. Again, you can use a plastic spatula or a plastic scraper if you prefer. Uh, for me, this is, this is working for me today, so this is what I'm using. So I'm going to apply it. Remember, don't go over it too many times. Just want a nice, even coat. Don't get it too thick or too thin. And make sure that you cover all of the sections, not leaving any empty spaces. And I'm just lightly pulling this off section here. I'm going to pull with my tape and lift. And there we go. Next step on this again is going to be using the heat gun to dry it and let it puff up and then we'll be ready for the next step which is the milk paint. I pre-recorded this earlier when I was doing a test piece. I just wanted to show you here if you can follow this line as this heats up, it starts to grow and puff. I just wanted to give you a close up to show you what this looks like, what to be looking for when you're actually applying the heat gun to your embossing gel. Okay, I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about milk paint, which is our next step in this project. I have mixed together a couple of different colors that I'm going to use on this piece. The first thing that I used on it, of course, before I even put the embossing gel on here, was Amy Howard's One Step Paint in Harbor Lights. It's a great teal, like a muted teal color. I love it. It's just beautiful. So I put this on just one coat. It didn't have to be super thick. It doesn't have to have 100% coverage because there's so many layers going onto this piece. So I just started with the one light coat of Harbor Lights and then applied the gel, the embossing gel stencils. Everything's been blown dry, it's puffed up, it's kind of set now, cooled off, and it's ready to go. Another reminder to you is don't get your heat gun too close to your paint. It can tend to bubble up. I actually had a spot here and then on the other end where I had to just go over and lightly sand it and just touch it up with a brush because it can heat up your paint and start you know, bubbling that up too. So you just want to make sure you don't set it too long in one place as you're making this rise and set this gel. Okay, so the colors that I mixed together were uh, Kali Green. I did that for one, one color here. And it's just sort of a neutral kind of linen green, I guess is the way I would explain it. And then the other one I did was a 50-50 of Noir and this new color that came out not too long ago called Putting on the Roots. And I just bought a sample of this because I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. And I love it. It's a beautiful color. I don't know if you can kind of see this in here. A beautiful like sea blue. It's wonderful. And I mixed that with a little bit of the Noir, the black, just to give this a darker tone because this will go on last. So the first one I'm going to start with is this lighter one here, the Kali Green. And remember I have this other color underneath the Harbor Lights. So once I put this on and it dries, then I add the second one on and it dries. After that, I'll be able to go over it with the antiquing glaze and a sea sponge. And we'll get to that step here in just a little bit. But let's get started with the first coat of the milk paint. So the first coat that we have, the Kali Green, I'm going to just use a simple chip brush to do this. You want to keep it stirred all the time because it can tend to settle to the bottom. And, you know, it doesn't have a compound in it that causes it to actually seal. So you want to make sure that you always seal your milk paint when you're finished with your project. And we will do that for sure. Um, but the good thing about it at this stage is that it's easy to wipe off of other things. So if I get it on the mirror, it'll come right off. It's no big deal. So I'm just going to lightly layer on a little bit of color across the piece. Now, if I want to, when I'm finished, I can go over it again with another coat and let it dry before I add the darker color that I have, putting on the Ritz and Noir mixed together. 
So I'm going to do this all over the piece. Let it set and dry. Then add the darker color and then we will go over at that point with the antiquing glaze pulling parts of it off with the sea sponge. Okay, you can see here now that this first coat of milk paint has dried. This was the Kali Green, and I'm getting ready to put on the mixture of putting on the Ritz and Noir that are mixed together here, this darker color. It's kind of a deep blue-green blackish color, I think, that's going to go on next. And you have to remember when you put on milk paint, it's going to dry to look pretty much like the same color that you started out with in the package until you add more. Uh, products to the top of it. So underneath this was the original paint color One Step uh, Harbor Lights that I have here. So there's quite a bit of difference once you add the milk paint onto the piece over that original color. So you can really tell the difference now. First it was hard to tell until it completely dries and now you really notice it. So we're going to add the second coat, uh, the darker one, and let that dry and then move on to the next step. We are adding milk paint color number two, and you don't want to go over this too many times because it will actually start pulling up the other milk paint color, just maybe like a good one sweep, maybe touch it a little bit, you know, if you have to go back over it, just a small spot or something, but don't keep rubbing over it with a second coat, with the, uh, with the second color, because if you do, it will mix them together and then you won't have a separation of colors. So I'm getting ready to apply this. Just going to start like this and lay on this second color. Just dark enough to really make a difference. And I don't mind these little spots where there are not the second coat, the second color. Not too many of them because we're going to be pulling paint off anyway. And this is pretty. I'm so excited, you guys. This little part right here on the top was not original to the piece. I actually found a wooden applique and then cut it in half. A wooden flower, I cut it in half and just glued it onto the piece with liquid nail so that it would have some something interesting at this top in the in the arch. Again, don't, don't go over it too many times. Just drop your paint on and move on to the next spot. You don't have to be perfect about your milk paint, especially when you're going to pull it off with a sea sponge. It's just really more about getting it on, getting it on quickly over your first layer of milk paint, getting that second one on. And you don't even have to have 100% coverage. It's completely up to you how you want to finish your piece. We're ready to start with the antiquing glaze and I wanted to show you a couple of things here. So I have a cup that I'm going to put the glaze into to be able to dip my sea wool sponge into. You can get these at the hardware store, any hobby store, and you want to make sure that it's wet and we're going to put it in water first. You want to make sure that it's wet before you actually put it into the antiquing glaze. I have several different kinds of uh, sea sponges here. You know, you can get any, all different kinds. I think they're all different colors. Different sizes and shapes. I have smaller ones for little jobs. You can actually cut these with scissors, giant ones like this, to make them smaller to use on uh, little pieces that you're working on. 
And then something like this, I think I'm probably going to use my softer one here. It's a little bit longer. Maybe use this on this piece here and maybe a small one. So I've picked the ones that I want to use and I have some water here to dip this into first and then I'm going to use the antiquing glaze in a cup. So I'm going to pour that into a cup. See, it looks a little bit like watered down tea. Drop that in there. And then I'm going to take my sponge, start with this larger one here, saturate it in the water. Squeeze it out. And then I'm dipping it into my cup and then wringing it out. And I am getting ready to just run this across the piece here. So it has dried obviously lighter like we talked about earlier. It's going to dry to the color of the actual paints, milk paints mixed together before they're wet. So I'm kind of doing what we call a pass over over this piece to just moisten it a little bit. And then I'm going to start pulling the milk paint. And I like to just take my sea sponge and run over it. See, it's already pulling some of this up and then turning it so that I can get down to these other colors. If you can tell in here, you see we've got this main harbor lights underneath. We've got the Kali green and then we have this mix of noir and putting on the Ritz on top. And then just maybe turn your wrist a little bit. I like to do that as well so that you don't have the same pattern. You want to keep flipping your sponge over. And then when you're done, you let it dry. You're going to take a look at it. You may want to go over it again. If you take off too much, the really neat thing about milk paint is that you can go back and just add more to it. Let it dry. Get out your antiquing glaze and then start pulling again. Once you've probably gotten quite a bit of the milk paint pulled from your piece and it starts having your sponge look more like paint than sponge, what I would recommend is taking it back and running it through your water and getting out a lot of that paint, dipping it back into your antiquing glaze, wring that out a little bit, and then just start moving forward. So we'll just keep working on this piece. I'm going to go all the way down to the end and then back, and then we'll move on to the next step. Next step is mind your own beeswax. What you need to do is just take the wax. I always try to shake it up because there tends to be some of the, the liquid that settles in the top. You just shake that up really good and then you want to put that on a piece of cardboard. Just squeeze a little bit out like this. It doesn't take very much. And then you're going to run your brush through it. I'm using Amy's one and a half inch chip brush to run my wax through. And I'm offloading a little bit here, and I'm just going to place it all over the mirror and let this dry, let this come to tack. So that will take probably about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. It just depends on your humidity. After this happens, then we're going to add some dark wax accents to it and then buff it out nicely once that second dark wax comes to tack.
We have Mind Your Own Beeswax all over this piece now. It has set and it's ready to go for the second wax, which we're going to use the dark antique wax here in the puck. So it's about the same process as the other wax where you want to take a little bit of the wax onto your brush, just like this, and then you're going to offload it onto a piece of cardboard, just like this, and then lightly apply it to your piece. I just want some highlights. I don't want this real heavy. So I'm just going to lightly cross over this piece, kind of giving it a worn feel. And it adds depth to it as well. It also pulls out that stencil a little bit more so you can really see it pop. When I'm finished with this, it'll be just a tiny shade darker. But it's going to set for 20 or 30 minutes, and I think it will be ready to buff out completely, giving this piece a nice sheen in the end and really making these parts stand out. Now you can add as much or as little of a dark wax as you like. Just remember always to put a minor on beeswax or a light wax, your base wax on first before adding the dark. Otherwise, it can tend to be very, very heavy. We don't, we don't want that on this piece, especially on whites. You have to be careful with that because it can make something look immediately dirty. And that's not the look we're going for. So I'll get finished applying this to the entire piece, highlighting these lovely new embossing gel stencil beautiful sections. And then we'll get an overall picture of the finished product. Here's the finished project, and it really did transform it from something that was just a simple oak mirror into a tranquil piece that pops out on the wall. I love the way the embossing gel just stands out and makes this more unique. You know, no two will ever be alike, and so I think that's a really neat point to make is that you can create anything, and when you do it with your own hands, your own way, there'll never be another one just like yours. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time, and you all have a wonderful week.